Hey, for those of you who are watching the replay, um, will only be a few minutes, so you won't have to really fast forward too much. But just something that just dropped in my spirit for a few minutes here. Hey, Minnie Me, how are you doing? Hey, Lady D. Hey, Michelle. Hey, y'all, what's going on? Hey, Dr. Ivy, that's what's up. Listen, listen. Good afternoon. So, I just I just got a few seconds, few minutes, and I'm running some errands. Um, hey, baby boy. Um, my mom has been in the hospital the last few days. So, that's why you all really haven't seen much of me on social media as far as my videos so i've been down the last three weeks i'm going to take another week off i didn't intend to take off as long as i have but um much needed so my mom's been in the hospital the last few days and so i want to talk to two groups of people um so everybody will fall into one of these groups of people i want to talk to first the church folk the first subgroup of people is the church people. I don't care if you're AME. I don't care if you're Pentecostal, Baptocostal. I don't care if you're Kojic, Church of God by Faith, AOG, um, No G. I don't care whatever whatever denomination you are, non-denom, whatever. This sub first subgroup is church folk. The next subgroup that I want to talk to is, and I know Dr. Avid, Dr. Avid Bunt, you don't fit this one, but I want to talk to black people. I, not African Americans, not none of that. I want to talk to black people. So black people and church people, this one's for you. I really want to deal just for some brief seconds um, because something, I'm going to try to keep myself together, but something has hit my life that has sucker punched me in all transparency that I never thought would be my portion. And so for some of the some of you who know my testimony, I was diagnosed by, with a bipolar disorder early on in my life, early, in my early 20s, which usually that's kind of around the time is diagnosis between 16, 17, early 20s or so. Um, but I want to deal with altered mental status. And I want to deal with the way we deal with it culturally in the church and the way we deal with it also as African American people, black people. Um, and so my mom right now has an altered mental status. And so right now we're trying to figure out what that altered mental status is, whether it's dementia, whether it's Alzheimer's, whether it's some type of mass. We're trying to figure out what this is that's going on because she's deteriorating very, very quickly. But the issue is this, is that we have to come to a place where we're managing mental health in the church and mental health as black people a little differently. And some of these things that we're seeing people with that, that, that they're destroying their bodies with tattoos, they're destroying their bodies with piercing, they're destroying their bodies um, with, with the butt implants, they're destroying their bodies with the breast implants. Some of these things, yes, we do need deliverance. Um, in the middle of it today, my sister is in the midst of AMS. Yes, ma'am. And it's challenging, but, but they're destroying their bodies. And so I want, I want us to determine and decide and learn how to discern the factor between what is sin and what is an issue. Because sin has to be delivered. Sin, demons, devils have to be cast out. But the Bible says that the woman with the issue was healed. It didn't say anything about a devil was being cast out. It didn't say anything about a demon. It said the Bible says that the woman with the issue was healed. And so in this day and age, as the church culture, we have to determine that we have to discern what needs to be cast out and what needs to be healed. Because oftentimes we're calling our sin our issues. And because we call sin issues that we never get delivered of of the of the issue because it's really sin. But I'm challenging you on today that every issue that you have in your life can be healed. See, issues have to be healed. 
and sin has to be delivered and sin has to be cast out and sin has to be repented for and sin has to be put away you don't see nothing about the woman with the issue of blood that she came and said oh my god i'm sorry i repent and i did this and i did wrong no she touched the hem of his garment and she was healed and so on today, you know, I just want to challenge how we deal with some things. And I began to really think so seriously about this stuff. My mom's going through altered mental status. That is in the DSM-5. Now, it used to be DSM-4. They've upgraded. Now it's the DSM-5. My The bipolar disorder that I was diagnosed with, that was in the DSM-4. But now, and it's still in the DSM-5. And then, you know, what my mom is going through right now, and Ivy Bunk, your sister going through, it is in the DSM-5. But it's, it's an issue. And it's an issue that can be healed. Now, do I believe that there's some demonic play there, some demonic retaliation, and some demonic backlash there? Absolutely, I do. But we have to learn how to balance the two. And we have to learn how to bring deliverance and healing together because they're two different streams, but they flow together. And we have to learn how to be able to, 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 to bring both of them together in, especially in the church culture so that our people can be, um, so that our people can be totally healed. And so, um. And so when we begin to deal with some of these mental issues that we're, we seen the mental issues in the church. When you got people who can't, who will be late for church because they can't put some, 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 some paint on their face and they can't put makeup on their face. If you got an issue with being able to get to church without makeup, without eyelashes, without eyeshadow, without mascara, without lipstick on, you got a problem. You got a problem. If if it's going to challenge you internally, that if, that if you got a choice between running late for church and being on time to church to get your face together, I'm sorry, you got a problem. And I know I lost half of y'all right there, but you have a problem because what we're so, because what a lot of the, a lot of this self-esteem issues that people are having in the church, uh, all that stuff is a reflection of self-esteem issues. Now, don't get me wrong. I like being beat to the gods. Trust me. I, I ain't saying that now. I love being beat to the gods. I love makeup. I grew up watching my mom put on makeup. I grew up with that. So that's not what I'm saying. But if but if it's at a place where you feel uncomfortable without your face, you feel uncomfortable without your mask, you feel uncomfortable without so baby, some some going on with you internally. And so I'm challenging us as church feet folk. And especially those of us who are black, I'm challenging us how we deal with mental disorders, how we deal with altered mental statuses, because some of this stuff that self low that we're calling low self esteem and self esteem issues and all of this kind of stuff and self hatred is called BDD, body dysmorphic disorder. Body dysmorphic disorder says that there is a flaw in your body that you hate or dislike so much to the point that you are willing to alter it or change it by any means necessary and if it cannot be changed it puts you in a place of depression with your life and with yourself so every at, at, at absolutely pastor carlos identity so every sunday we're seeing people in identity crisis see this stuff that's low self-esteem and self see it's going way beyond this stuff going into the dsm-5 and i know y'all want to be you know we want to be deep we want to be spooky we want to be spiritual but let me tell you something we need these we need christian counselors we need the deliverance workers we need the healers but we also need christian counselors that can clinically minister to the soul and the spirit and the mind of the people in the church y'all ain't gonna like this because a lot of y'all think y'all wonders a lot of y'all think, yes, but that, but that, but see, let me tell you something. But this is why people are repetitively coming to the altar over and over again for the same thing. They're getting delivered from homosexuality. They're getting delivered from the lesbianism. But there isn't that therapeutic person who really understands how the mind works, how the heart works, how the, the, the person who's clinically trained that understands how that works and to be able to get that to unravel out of them. See, yes, we do. So, so yes, as deliverance workers and healers, yes, we cast the devil out because he got to be cast out. 
we, 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 we cast him out. But we need people like LaMonica. We need the psychotherapists. We need the psychoanalysts. We need the licensed mental health counselors. We need the licensed mental health therapists. We need them to be able to go in and decode. They got to decode this thing. And we have to stop acting like we got the piece of every puzzle. You ain't got the piece. You don't have all of the pieces to the puzzle piece. Because let me tell you something. You are, you are a piece of God's puzzle. You are a piece of his puzzle. Which means he's giving you a certain territory. He's giving you a certain landscape. And when you connect with the other pieces of the puzzle, then now we get a, we, 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 we get wholeness. We get righteousness. We get holiness. We get, we, we get, um, we, we get all of that together. So, I, I just want to just challenge y'all because of what I'm going through. We have to stop blowing people's issues off. Especially when it comes to mental illness. We got to stop blowing it off saying, oh, they'll be alright. Oh, ain't nothing wrong with her. Oh, she'll get it together. Because that was the thing that we did to my mom. And before my mom got to the state she's in right now, she knew something was going on with her mind. But she could not put her hand on it. And so as black people and church people, we want to go pray about it, but we don't want to be about it. We want to go pray about it. And but, but see, some things we some things you should have already prayed about. Some things you should have already fasted about. There's some things you should have already you you should have already had an impartation from God about already so that when it comes into your rearview mirror when it comes into when it comes into your sight that you able to deal with it see she was she was talking and she was saying something was wrong but because people get so busy with their life and people get so busy with everything that's going on with them they ignore when people are really crying out say you know what well, something is wrong I don't know what's wrong but something is wrong so black people, when it comes to our families and this mental health thing, we got to do better. Whether it's Alzheimer's, whether it's dementia, alter mental status, whether it's body dysmorphic disorder, whether it's schiz schiz uh, schizoaffective, schizophrenia, whether it's bipolar disorder like me, we, we have got to do better. We have got to do better. And we need to know how to pray for the mind. See, we got to know how to pray for the man. See, that's why the Bible tells us that our minds need to be renewed what, every day. He didn't say every other day. He didn't say once a month. He said the mind got to be renewed every day. Every day. It's got to be renewed. And so, church folk, we got to get better with um, counseling and therapy. And we got to get better. I'm all for people being medication free. I never took medicine a day in my life for bipolar disorder. Now, I'm, I'm going to be truthful with y'all. I, I was a little off. I was a little crazy for a little while there. I was a little, you know, I was a little, but you know what? I self-medicated. And so because I self-medicated, I became a, I became an alcoholic because I self-medicated. And so um, with that, because I didn't know what else to do. I didn't know what else to do with that. So that's how I chose to medicate. I medicated, I self-medicated with alcohol and being in the bed of men. And that's how, I, that's how I, I medicated. That's how I got through that. And so we have to look at the mind. Now, those of you who are deliverance workers and healing ministers, a minister, he delivers ministers, whatever you want to call it, y'all make sure you cover your mind. Make sure you cover your mind. I learned deliverance from my mother. I learned how to cast out the devil from my mother. The church didn't teach me how to cast the devil out. My mama taught me how to cast the devil out. And that's a whole nother preach for a whole nother day for those of y'all who got children. My mama taught me how to cast the devil out. My mama taught me how to administer the arts of healing to people. I learned that from my mama. But the reality of it is, is that when we go into a place where we are really tearing down the kingdom of darkness and we are really coming against the things of the enemy, you better cover your mind. You better cover your mind from the backlash and the retaliation of the enemy and make sure that there are doors in your life that are closed. 
Because the first thing he's going to come after is your mind. That's the first thing he's going to come after is your mind. So, on today, alter mental status. I challenge you all, two groups of people I was speaking to today, black folk and church folk. So that probably should cover it all, unless you're an atheist. Don't care what denomination you are, but we got to do better with mental illness in the kingdom. We have really, really got to deal with this on a different level. This stuff that we're seeing that's, that, you know, self-esteem and all this kind of stuff we're dealing with body dysmorphic disorder we're dealing with um we're dealing with manic depressives um you know we're dealing with some things that are going but beyond our vocabulary and so what's happening is because our vocabulary is so limited and our vocabulary has become so antiquated that we are not able to effectively Bring change and health and healing and wholeness to the people. I ain't talking about righteousness. Because let me tell you something. You you don't have a role in righteousness anyway. Righteousness is what Christ does. Holiness is what you do. Righteousness is what Christ does. Because the Bible says that because Abraham believed that God imputed unto him righteousness because he believed. So you can't do nothing about righteousness. Yo, that's why the Bible says your best, your, your best righteousness, your best things, your best works are as filthy rags. Why? Because you, you it ain't your responsibility. Your role of righteousness is just to believe. Christ takes care of the rest. But holiness is what you do. So I ain't talking about holiness. I ain't talking about righteousness. I'm just talking about the fact of us having to learn how to really, yes ma'am, Dr. Ivy, beyond our vocabulary. That's why I'm so thankful about what Dr. Ivy is doing with these kids, how she's expanding our vocabulary, how she's ex expanding our, our, our mindset. Because let me tell you something, every race has an existential plight. Every race has an existential plight. Every race. For Latinos, they deal more of with incest in, in their in their families and in their bloodlines than any their, their their incest their incest percentages are off the chart, off the hook. So every race has something existentially that they deal with. So Yes, lay hands suddenly on no man, neither be partake of men's sins. Keep thyself pure. That's right, Sherelle. So I just wanted to drop y'all. I'm in between. I had to leave the hospital for, for, for you know, an hour or so to go run some errands. And, um, you know, come out here. And um, I don't know if I was bleeding all over y'all or what. I was just, what it, whatever it is, y'all just take it on the love. But I felt led to really um, share that with you all because... The mind, we gotta, we gotta deal with our minds, and we have to deal. And I want y'all to cover y'all minds. Bleed the blood of Jesus over your minds. Renew your mind every day. If you getting forgetful, strengthen your mind. See, that's the thing. We, the little things that are happening to our minds, we take for granted, and we take our mind for granted, and we take that our mind is always gonna be here. Our mind is always gonna work. Our mind is always going to do what it is that we want it to do until one day we're here and we don't even know that we're here. I, I told God I can't live like that. Take me out. Because I don't want to be here and I don't know I'm here. So, yeah, that's my that's my rant and rave today. Altered mental status. And let's start ca stop calling sin issues. Because sin cannot be healed. Sin has to be delivered because devils have to be cast out. But your issues can be healed all day long. All day long. So I just wanted to just share that with you all on today. I, I love you. So I got to go run in and do these errands because I got to get back up here to um, the hospital. But you know what? I love you guys. And that was just something I wanted to share with you. So for those of you who are have ever been diagnosed with mental mental illness before yourself i speak healing to your mind i speak healing to your soul to your spirit whether it's depression whether it's clinical depression whether it's manic depressive whether it's bipolar whether it um 
schizoidophrectal, schizophrenia. Um, that DSM-5 is real thick. It's a whole lot of disorders in there. Even even now, home, it used to be that homosexuality and lesbianism used to be in the... Is the am I right, Dr. Ivy? Didn't, um, didn't homosexuality and lesbianism used to be in the DSM as well? But I don't think it's in there anymore. They have taken it out. But I speak peace to y'all minds on today. Um, I speak peace. And... Um, I speak peace to every part of you, your mind, your heart, your soul. Um, and I speak peace to those of you who are caregivers. Um, never thought that I would be a caregiver so early in my life. Ne never thought. And I never thought I'd have to be a caregiver for this chick. Um, my mom has a bachelor's. My mom has a master's degree. Um, my mom had her own private practice um hmm. my mom is a licensed mental health therapist she had her own patients and she was counseling she was doing all the diagnosing she was doing all the therapy and she was doing all the counseling so I pray for y'all on today and um, I cover you with the love of God I cover you with the healing of God that the healing of God is your portion so didn't really get on here for for any sympathy or any empathy but I, I really wanted to um, just say we need to do better we need to do better in the church and we need to do better as black folk we do so um God's blessing for y'all. I gotta go run in here because I got I gotta fulfill these orders for these these prayer shawls that I'm doing now. So in the midst of um, all of this, life still goes on. In the midst of all of this, still gotta work, still gotta preach, still gotta prophesy, still gotta move forward. So um, yeah, Coach K. So I'm getting ready to go get some fabric because I have prayer shawl orders that. Are I need to fulfill. So if y'all want one, inbox me. <laughs> How about that?